It's just, it's just the aid of the Which one am I reading? Uh, no. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just you're learned. Good. You're good, but I'm a student learning, so I'm going to take it the wrong taste. Where am I? What, what? The introduction. The introduction. The introduction. Oh, wow. I gotta try to make the introduction sound good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> introduction. Where is the introduction? I don't know where the introduction is now. So. I think it's in the. Uh, okay. There you go. Page. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. okay. All right. Steven <laughs> story there. It yeah, it's pretty funny. But I wanted to pray for for Benji. Benji, why not? So you give me your hand. So yeah. uh, Justin, you come around and Noah come on your hands. On Benji. So, it's very. We're life changing times, so we don't want to, you know, routine social conditions ignore it, don't talk about it, you know, more. But we, that's that's wrong, I think. You know, so <laughs> that's terribly wrong, actually. So you know, we uh, good friends, family, especially needed to go through the thing together, right? So we go together, not even getting the nitty gritty, but go together with with your heart and spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. Okay, like you lead us in prayer, pray for the family, for Benji. Yeah. You grew up through those things, am I, Benji? Yeah. Well, Father, I do thank you for Benji and his family, Lord. I pray that you would just help them heal their heal their hearts, because I know what's been happening is very devastating, Lord. That you would put an ease in all of their hearts and that you would help them benefit and guide them through this time of suffering Lord that you would give them comfort and that you would help them grow in more of a relationship with you mm. from this time Lord mm. that you would be with them and lay your hand on them mm. And as time goes on, that they would <clears throat> truly seek you and know you more, Lord. Mm. That you would be the biggest part in their life. Mm. And that they could, t they could know that they can take all their problems to you, Lord. Mm. I pray for Benji and his family in Jesus' name. Mm. Go ahead, uh, brother Justin. Well, Father, we do <clears throat> recognize uh, your hand in the midst of Benji and his family. Mm. Lord, and you've not promised that we would go without difficulty or challenge, but what you've told us is that you would be with us, mm. Lord, that you would be the author of uh, our hearts mm. and minds, mm. and that, Lord, you would instruct us and guide us and lead us even through the difficult seasons. Mm. Lord, you are with us in the valley of the shadow of death. Yes. Lord, you... You comfort us in the midst of that. And you guide us and you lead us. And Lord, we're, we're thankful for your hand upon the family. Yes. Uh, I do pray, Lord, for each and every member of the family, Lord, mm -hmm. that you would instruct their heart. Mm -hmm. Lord, and you even know the, the hidden things, the things that may not be said. Mm -hmm. Lord, you know um, those little areas of tenderness and woundedness and brokenness. God, you know those areas that are, that are well known and pronounced. Mm -hmm. And you care for each of them, Lord, mm. as, uh, as a loving father. Mm. And so, uh, God, I pray that, uh, that the good fruit uh, that comes out of all things that work together for good. Uh, Lord, we do pray for uh, hearts and minds. We pray for even a, a, a togetherness and a unity, even in their own <coughs> household, Lord, that uh, it would be an opportunity to, to draw together, to love one another more mm. fervently, more faithfully. Yes, as you uh, lead by your spirit, Lord, and that, uh, God, that they would keep their eyes fixed upon the purposes and plans that you have for them. Uh, but, Lord, we are certainly thankful for their lives in our midst and uh, all that you are doing and accomplishing in them and through them. Uh, and, Lord, we do thank you that, uh, that they are such an encouragement uh, to us and a blessing to us. And, and, Lord, we are certainly thankful to have them back uh, with us, uh, Lord, because it certainly is a, a part of us missing uh, when each of us are away, but uh, Lord, they were missed. And, uh, Lord, so we pray for uh, even recovery and, and jet lag and tiredness and, and uh, as they adjust back to 
the course of normal life here. Uh, Father, we pray your mercies upon them. Uh, we just pray that you protect them and guide them and lead them and comfort them because you are God of all comfort. And so we thank you for them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Time is limited, so let's move on. Sorry. Maybe you definitely our prayers in the community and for your family. <coughs> Well, let me start uh, with the introduction, if you are there. Um, in its deepest traditions, poetry is a costly form. Praise songs, the battle songs, history narratives, love chants, the spells, ceremonial hymns. In the mid hall and thereabout, all the things were delivered to the audiences with an assumption that the sound of words spoken aloud was an essential part of their meaning. When pretty books were invented as uh, more eyes were able to see words on the page than ever before, this sound world modified. Gradually became more and more involved with the page world with the arrangement and look of words and with the idea that the meaning of a poem depended on the understandings generated through the eye as much as it did on those received through the air. All pampers depended more on the eye than indeed <coughs> on the air. In fact, and the generation upon generation, the silent readers followed, the air became increasingly like a sleeping partner in the appreciation of poetry. It appetites were fed by conversations about mantra and rhyme, but uh, what? Rhyme? Rhyme? Rhyme. Yeah. Okay. It is a hunger to hear things out loud which was generally ignored or left unsatisfied. The things have turned out the internet that a very uh, new frangled thing had been able to restore the very old fung fungled truths about the poetry's deep nature, about the breath and noise, about the caustic, the poetry archive proves this. It was launched in 2005 to host record recordings for poet, poets reading their own, own work. Now it has a large audience at the time of writing, around 200,000 people use the site every month. The every month it lessened to over a million pages of poetry. English language poetry, reading from the earliest record, recordings, Tennyson, the Browning to brand new, Contemporaries that all the ramp around with editorial material that gives useful information and opinion. The Poetry Archive celebrates what Robert Frost called the sound of sense. It is exemplified by poets himself. That in 2013, this celebration was elaborated into poet by heart, an annual competition for secondary schools in England, which asked contestants to learn two or three poems and be judged on their recitations. It seemed to have awoken a half-forgotten pleasure. In the first year alone, many hundreds of schools registered for the competition. In the second, the number of competing schools increased by 20%. Until now, students entering poetry by heart. Okay, let's move on to the next uh, paragraph. So what were our guiding principles as we put the Anthology together. Our starting point was a wish to give as much as collateral co mm -hmm. benefit to the competition as possible, in particular by encouraging students to read more <coughs> widely than any curriculum easily allowed. For this reason, we asked them to choose one poem written before 1914 and one written after, which is why we have ordered the Anthology, anthology, is that right? Anthology, okay. Chronic, chronological, man, that's different. Chronologically, chronologically, as far as uh, possible. By date, if you're allowed to to ridicule my pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By date, the publication or composition, we have in most cases regularized the spelling for older poems to make them more immediately accessible for recitation purposes. So we recognize that something the historical authenticity of our changing language may be obscured in that way, and try to bring as much variety into our selections as possible, almost unknown poems or familiar poems from the mainstream, 
love poems, war poems, funny poems, heartbroken poems, poems that recreate the world we know, and poems written on the dark side of the moon. And all that is chosen with a view to their being recited out loud. Not booming poems necessarily, so there are a few of them, but poems that in striking, fascinating, subtle ways rely as much on song that as they do on sense to communicate their meaning. Poems that allow for no separation between these activities that they live in our ears, just as resoundingly as they do in our eyes. We hope poetry recitation is recovered as an enjoyable way to learn about the poetry in schools. We hope the sound waves is Pathology will dilate beyond the confines of the competition. It is all lies everywhere, reminding us about the time honored qualities of poetry in new ways. Enjoy it. Julia Blake, Mike Dixon, and the remotion, Jane Sprank, Sprank Land. Okay. Um, acknowledgement. No, we don't need an acknowledgement about the sequences of poems. Okay, no, okay, read them portion of the bit. Mm -hmm. Sure. <clears throat> about the sequence of the poems. The poetry by heart competition anthology was always conceived as a timeline. The idea was to help students and teachers to see poetry as a conversation across time with influences, connections, and arguments mapped over a thousand years with changes in literary language and poetic convention flowing through it. <clears throat> we selected one poem by each poet to help give the bro broadest view possible within a modestly sized collection. To make the poems appear on the digital timeline on the website, mm -hmm. we had to pin each poem to a specific year. This is no mean feat, as there is rarely any such thing as the poem. Early versions appearing in magazines and small press publications are not necessarily the same as versions in later collections or anthologies. What is counted as the publication date depends on which version is chosen. Our default has been to select the first printed collection in which the poem appeared, not the first publication in a magazine or a pamphlet. Then there, then there is the difficulty that sometimes a poet's work is published not only posthumously, such as happened in the case of Garrard Manley Hopkins, if we had fixed the poem to the publication date, in this case, there would have been some strange chronological effects. His poem, In Verse Nade, I don't know if you it, was first published in 1918, although it was written in 1881 and Hopkins died in 1889. This would have been confusing in our timeline website, where the dates of the poet's birth and death appear alongside the date of the poem. Our default has therefore been to use publication dates where these exist within the lifespan of the poet and to use the composition dates for the poems were published after the poet's death. In preparing the publication of the anthology in this printed volume, we retained this chronological sequence. We hope you will enjoy the time traveling forwards and back which involves. Mm. So what we're going to do is uh, <clears throat> they allow Anthony Pecan a certain year before 1912, something like that. This is First World War, I guess. Then one poem after that. But uh, we're going to start with the newer ones, um, if that is okay for you guys. So let's find um, Out Out, Robert Frost. And so we're going to start from there, read forward to the end of the book. So before him, things can be old and we come back to it, you know, if you need to. There's a lot of poems to read. Okay, in order to help you guys writing poems, poetry, want to read the latest one if possible. So more helpful for you to write a poem, you say. I appreciate this. Robert the Frost, Out Out. You, you guys know where it is? On 142, if anyone else is wondering. Okay. Okay, we're gonna have it. Um, our best reader. Hey, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. About that. Yeah. yeah. So far, you are good. I'm catching up. So, all right. Um, you can also correct me if I. Oh, else. okay. <laughs> Robert Frost, out, out. The buzzsaw snarled and rattled in the yard, and made dust and drops, stove length sticks of wood. 
sweet scented stuff when the breeze drew across it. And from those that lifted eyes could count five mountain ranges, one behind the other, under the sunset far into Vermont. And the saw snarled and rattled, snarled and rattled as it ran light or had to bear a load. And nothing happened. Day was all but done. <coughs> Call it a day. I wish they customer. might have said. Oh, oh, you guys continue. Let me do this. <laughs> to please the boy by giving him the half Hello, hour that a boy yeah. counts so much when saved from work. His sister stood beside them in her apron to tell them supper. At the word, the saw, as if to prove saws knew what supper meant, leaped out of the boy's hand, or seemed to leap. He must have given the hand. However, it was neither refused the meeting, but the hand, the boy's first outcry, was a rueful laugh, and he swung toward them, holding up the hand, half an appeal, but half as if to keep the life from spilling. Then the boy saw all, since he was old enough to know. Big boy, doing a man's work, though a child at heart, he saw all spoiled. Don't let him cut off my hand. The doctor, when he comes, don't let him, sister. So, but the hand was already gone. The doctor put him in the dark of ether. He lay and puffed his lips out with his breath, and then the watcher at his pulse took fright. No one believed. They listened at his heart. Little, less, nothing. And that ended it. No more to build on there. And they, since they were not the one dead, turned to their affairs. I would... <laughs> this is not like Robert Frost to me, that's weird. It's a long one. Yeah. Hmm. Huh? <laughs> I think um, a boy got his hand cut off and then he died. <laughs> oh, okay. What made you think that? I'm out. <laughs> but as it's like, what, exact, what, what the meaning is here, I'm not sure. <clears throat> kind of got distracted during the poem, but I have to read it again. I guess we can maybe just move to the next one. <laughs> Charlotte Mew. Bam. Naomi can read this one. Sometimes in the overheated house. Okay. Okay. I actually can't read right now. Can you read? Uh, Esther, go ahead. Sometimes in the overheated house, but not for long, smirking and speaking rather loud, I see myself among the crowd, where no one fits the singer to a song or sifts the unpainted from the painted faces of the people who are always on my stair. They were not with me when I walked in heavenly places, but can, but can I spare? In the blind earth's great silences and spaces, the din, the scuffle, the long stair, if I went back and it was not there, back to the old known things that are the new, the folded glor glory of the gorse, the sweet prior air to the larks that cannot praise us knowing nothing of what we do and the divine wise trees that do not care 
Yet, to leave fame, still with such eyes and that bright hair. God, if I might, and before I, before I go hence, take in her steed to her toss bed. One little dream, no matter how small, how wild. Just now, I think, I found it in a field under a fence. A frail, dead, newborn lamb, ghostly and pitiful and white. A block upon the night, the moon's dropped child. Yeah, I listen. Sir, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the moon's dropped child. Yeah. A blot upon the night. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is. Huh. I haven't heard of Charlotte Mew. Is anyone else? Interesting. <laughs> um, Gail, do you want to read the next one? <laughs> what? And I will. Let me just warn everyone. I will most likely get stuck on a word or pronounce it weird. <laughs> no worries. Right. So, just a warning, everyone. Yeah, or skip one. So, just FYI. A voice from the dark is calling me. In the close house, I nurse a fire. Out in the dark, cold winds rush free to rock heights of my desire. I smoother and smother. Oh, sorry. I warned you. I warned you. It's fine. No, no. I smother in the in the house in the valley below. Let me out to the night. Let me go. Let me go. Spirits that ride the sweeping blast, frozen and rigid, oh, rigid tenderness. Wait, for I leave the fire at last. My little love's warm loneliness. I smother in the house in the valley below. Let me out to the night. Let me go, let me go. High on the hills are beating drums. Clear from the line of marching men to, to the rock's edge, the hero comes. He calls me, and he calls me again. On the hill, there is fighting, victory, or quickly death. In, in the house is fire, which I fan with sick breath. I smother in the house in the valley below. Let me out to the dark. Let me go, let me go. Sounds more like a song to me than a poem. But, uh, yeah. Well, that's it? That's whose poetry that one? That was um, Anne Elwood. Another one? Yeah. It's supposed to give you some information on the poetry, no? I forgot about that. We could actually go back to our press and review from there. Yeah. I totally forgot about that. Where is that? So that was uh, page 142. And we can go to the very back of the book. Oh, it's the back of the book. Which will give us mm, this is tough. a little context about the poem. Where is that? It's a 416. On my phone. Yep. Where is that? <laughs> <laughs> Keep scrolling. <Not> trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. I don't know how to do that. So, uh, Noah, can you read it? Um, portion? Sure. Give me, give me a few words so I can do a search. Mm -hmm. uh, the poem begins by depicting the dominant presence. The poem beginning by depicting. Okay. Great. You want me to read it? Yeah. The poem begins by depicting the dominant presence of the buzzsaw before dwelling on the landscape for several lines. The focus then returns to personifying the saw that snarled and rattled, introducing a sense of menace and danger to the poem. Even so, there is also an atmosphere of work coming to an end in relaxation as the boy's sister comes out to call him in for supper. At this moment, the fatal accident happens. How does Frost describe the moment when the boy's hand is caught in the saw and the boy's reaction? Mm. What do you think the tone of the 
poem in this section, lines 16 to 26. The doctor cannot save the boy, and the last seven lines record the boy slipping into death while those around him turned to their affairs. Consider the tone of the ending. Is it deliberately and ironically detached? It has been suggested that as the poem was written during the First World War, it might be a commentary on the destruction of innocence and the callous disregard for life seen in this war. The title is a reference to Macbeth and his response to his wife's death. Mm. Out, out, brief candle. Mm. Wow. And it gives a description of Robert Frost himself. Mm. Great. Robert Frost was a dominant figure in American cultural life throughout the first half of the 20th century. Mm. On his death in 1963, President Kennedy talked about Frost leaving behind him imperishable verse that gives joy and understanding. Mm. Frost's verse volumes of poetry were published in New England, but became a more widely known poet when he moved for a few years to England and met poets such as Ezra Pound and Robert Graves. Mm. Frost believed that a perfect poem was a fusion of emotion and thought. It is the lucid combination of feeling and intellect in his poems that help him, helped him become so successful and ensured the popularity of poems such as The Road Not Taken, mm. Oh, just the road out thing I thought I was going to listen to one. While skillfully handling traditional verse forms, he captured the ry rhythms and texture of ordinary language. He delighted in the rural landscape of New England, but could also explore profound issues of life and death with gravity and wit. So that is Robert Frost. I don't Robert know. Frost. Okay, what's the next one? We also read, without you, uh, Charlotte Mew's poem, Fame. Fame. Okay. I did not read the uh, analysis though. Okay, you read it now. Okay. Analysis. So, Fame, Charlotte Mew, 1869-1980. In Fame, the speaker struggles with self-identification. Mm. In the overheated house, how does she depict herself? She contrasts her experience of showing off in a crowd of people Courting fame, perhaps, with when she walked in heavenly places, free to be creative and expressive. She feels the tension between silences and spaces, and the din and the scuffle. How is nature depicted in the central section when she talks about the air and larks and trees? Mm. The speaker exclaims excitedly about the prospect of leaving fame and replacing it with one little dream. Mm. The dream turns into a nightmare when, in line 22, the speaker describes finding the dream in a field under a fence. It is a frail, dead, newborn lamb. The image becomes even more disturbing and haunting when the poem concludes with two more descriptions of the dead dream. It is a blot upon the night and the moon's dropped child. What might these challenging metaphors represent? Are they referencing to the blocking of the creative aspirations of the female poet or simply to the impossibility of being true to oneself? The poet. Charlotte Mew was surrounded by mental health, mental ill health and death from a young age. Mm -hmm. Three brothers died while she was still a child and two other siblings were committed to mental institutions. She vowed never to marry, fearful of the mental ill health any children she might, as she had might develop. Well, Mew was not a prolific writer but began intermittently publishing poetry and short fiction in magazines. Mm. She achieved some recognition after her narrative poem The Farmer's Bride appeared in a journal in 1912 mm. and she began to be invited to readings and gatherings in the influential literary circles in London. Mm. Her first collection of poetry sold slowly but a revised edition published in England and America attracted interest and praise. Mm. In 19 1923, literary friends used their influence to secure Mew a small government pension, mm. but she became increasingly isolated and delusional. Mm. She entered a nursing home in 1928, but committed suicide oh. by drinking disinfectant. We, we, we can we can wow. bypass that life wow. Wow. <laughs> a lot of tragic things. Um, there's a couple lines down. There's a second coming by by W. B. Yeats, William. William Barry, it's a place, um, and um, let's uh, let let um, Justin read the poet life a little bit. So. He said the poet life. Yeah, and that was further down from the second coming. Oh, okay. William Barry, it's yeah. okay. The second coming, mm -hmm. turning and turning, 
in the widening you know i'm talking about the, the, the oh the, the, the back the, part the, uh, uh, yeah the, the oh, okay file. let me uh yeah. <clears throat> let's see sorry that's okay let's find it here this this book is interesting organization but it the you can see sort of these actions is the poem for you to recite real loud mm. and right so I encourage you guys to get a copy, read aloud. This, this might be company your whole life, you know, so, you know. You know. All right, so the poem. Uh, when Yeats wrote The Second Coming, the First World War had just ended. Memories of the Easter Rising in Ireland were still vivid, and revolution had broken out in Russia. The world appeared to be in a state of flux and chaos. The second coming refers to the idea that Jesus will return to earth towards the end of time to bring justice and order. However, Yeats does not express a Christian interpretation of these final days. He believed in a complicated set of ideas to do with gyres, intersecting cone-shaped spirals representing various elemental, historical, and individual forces offering transitions into new worlds. Mm -hmm. The opening eight lines of the poem offer a complex vision of an apocalypse. Mm -hmm. In the second section, Yeats presents a disturbing image of a sphinx out of Spiritus Mundi, which literally means the spirit of the world, but here refers to Yeats' belief that every mind is linked to a single vast intelligence. This glimpse of the new order after 2,000 years of Christianity is not a comforting one. Yeats concludes by wondering about the nature of this rough beast that slouches towards Bethlehem to be born. The poet W.B. Yeats was born in Dublin and was a major contributor to the literary revival in Ireland in the second half of the 19th century. He was deeply influenced by Irish mythology and was keen to resist the cultural influences of English dominance in Ireland. In the 1890s, his creative output became prolific with several collections of poetry, plays dealing with Irish legends and mysticism, and books about Irish folklore. In 1889, he met his muse, Maud Gonet, whose character and political activism deeply influenced him. Yeats' work became more political in response to the events that led to the Easter Rising, which he commemorated in Easter 1916. He entered political life when he was appointed to the Senate of the Irish Free State in 1922. Mm. Yeats later worked, works continued to explore the relationship between art and life through symbol and powerful images. He was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1923. <coughs> a lot of history behind this person, mm -hmm. but I don't think he's a Christian, so he was a Christian, so mm -hmm. I think his uh, belief system a little bit different than ours. But a, a wonderful poem, poet, evidently, acknowledged. Okay, I like to read this one, if you allow me, so then have a few people read it. Then we're going to comment on it, see what it really means. W. Yeats, The Second Coming, Turning, Turning, in the Widing God. I have no idea what that word Where means. are we? The Second Coming, 154. Yeah. Jar, jar, jar. Turning the turning in the widening journey. The falcon cannot hear the falconer. Things fall apart. The center cannot hold. Mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. The blonde dim tide is loose and everywhere. The ceremony of innocence is drawn. The best lack all con the best lack all conviction. While the worst, a fall of passionate intensity. Surely, some revelation is at hand. Surely, the second coming is at hand. The second coming, hardly are those words out when a vast image of the Spiritus Mundi, Spiritus, Spiritus Mundi. No, that's Latin, I'm right. Yeah. yeah. Troubles my sight. Somewhere in the sands of the desert, a shape with a lion body and the head of a man, a gaze blank, get a pitiless at the sun, is moving its slow thighs, but all about it, real, shadows, uh, indignant, 
dead of birds. The darkness dissolves again, but I now I know that at twenty centuries of a stony shave, will wax to nightmare by a rocking cradle. And what rough bits it is ever come round the last, slouches towards Bethlehem to be born. That's a terrible poem. <laughs> Not a weird injury. But, um, um, yeah, Justin, can you read it for us? So, so. The Second Coming. Turning and turning in widening gyre, the falcon cannot hear the falconer. Things fall apart. The center cannot hold. Mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. The blood-dimmed tide is loosed and everywhere. The ceremony of innocence is drowned. The best lack all conviction, while the worst are full of passionate intensity. Surely some revelation is at hand. Surely the second coming is at hand. The second coming. Hardly are those words out when a vast image of a spiritus mundi troubles my sight. Somewhere in the sands of the desert, a shape with a lion body and the head of a man, a gaze blank and pitiless as the sun, is moving its slow thighs while all about it, real shadows of the indignant desert birds. The darkness drops again, but now I know that twenty centuries of stony sleep were vexed to nightmare by a rocking cradle. And what rough beast is our come round at last slouches towards Bethlehem to be born? Hmm. <coughs> oh, that's terrible. Huh? <laughs> that's fancy entry. Who's going to read it next? Who's going to read the next? Volunteer now. Why are we doing it? <laughs> I was being sorry. <laughs> <Huh? laughs> Nobody likes to read this poem. I'm joking. You don't like this poem? So what do you think you're talking about? Yeah? Any thoughts on this? Well, like, you know, I was saying when he, or whoever oh. read the thing, it was like... Oh, he yeah. was not really a Christian, but he was like talking about the second coming Second coming Jesus. in certain ways. And yeah. About, yeah. All that. Mm. Girls, <laughs> any thoughts? Difficult uh, poems, still, yeah, huh? Right? A lot of strange imagery. Don't write a poem like this, gloomy, gloomy. You know? I won't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yes, I have some beautiful poems. And I thought I going to have a good one here. This selection said, read aloud, you know, so, man. I think, it gives, I think it gives a really clear picture of those without God, though. Yeah. Because it, it really is, he's taking the second coming, I think, and with the backdrop of the World War, yeah. which he, he would have been writing from a perspective of, any world war, like doom and destruction, sure. like we are being visited and it's the worst thing. And it's it's almost as if what I interpreted from it or read from it yeah, is yeah. this anger with God. Yeah. That what we're marching towards is, is annihilation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he's wrongly he yeah. I think his wrong understanding of who God is yeah. is is painting the picture of the second yeah. coming being a a very like yeah. hateful and hurtful thing. And so sure. so his proper improper understanding yeah. Paints a picture that yeah. the second coming is about annihilation. It's interesting those times the literature really there is a denial of God in general. You yeah. know, Pong, his friend, was a Nazi. You know, so was uh, also denying God. So he was a gay actually. It's hard to tell you guys. <laughs> you grew up, you learn history in different facets. You know, po po poetry more than poem, poem poets. The life can be a little wanky, I think. <laughs> so, <laughs> like the one, like a frost, is a, is we're decent minds. We're uh, we're seldom, you know, in the ranks of modern poet poets. So, I mean, you look at uh, Shakespeare, the most famous poet po English world. Still, do you think he's a, he's a all that good believer? <laughs> I don't think so. You know, so <laughs> writing all the int Intrigues of um, courts, in work imagery, ghosts, whatever, you know, so, <laughs> and a lot of weird, weird stuff. So, talking about the witches, eh? no, I read the Tempidus, right? You read the Tempidus, right? No, you're talking about uh, with, yeah, with witches, you know, so, witch, 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 witch. So. Oh, sorry, <laughs> 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 just English. 
then then time it's really in England the culture is in, interesting. It's it's continue has a bad job witchcraft going on mm -hmm. by this. Yeah, Ireland is on the world. You know the word <coughs> idea of on the world. Halloween came from on the world. That's uh, the idea. So all linked together. Now, now you learn some interesting information. Yeah. Well, you got to learn something, right? It really happens. So that's your history. So. That's my history, to a certain extent. Okay, uh, anybody want to comment further, Esther? Your silent, silent partner. This can be overwhelming. It's, it's new, new territory. Uh, in that light, I, I like Emily Dickinson's poem, Suited for Us Better, maybe. So. I try to broaden your 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 horizon about poetry so i select this book i think it's gonna be good if i tell you to read aloud then right nobody read aloud the poems these days so, yeah turn out the team i'm not satisfied with the collection for sure so okay okay uh justin what do we do here so you don't have the test book okay no. okay <laughs> Um, well, it might, it might be, if, if we were looking at, I mean, I think they said chronologically, and so I think maybe the authors that we're dealing with right now yeah, are dealing in the world that, wars, that, so it's, yeah. gonna, it's probably going to be, and it looks like the ones that we've read have been a much darker, <laughs> much darker tone, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah. Good, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know and if there's uh, a... Let's, uh, let's uh, find another <laughs> one. Okay, the one called The Steel Life. Maybe that give us some points to it. Steel Life. Elizabeth... Uh, Daroche. Well, maybe we just stop reading poetry all the time. There's a T.S. Eliot. Okay, Journey, go ahead. Journey of the Magi. Word. That's a little, that's. A little bit down more. Back, back. Okay. Steel Life is a few it. past that. I got it. But T.S. Okay. Eliot was a Christian author. Is that right? I'm going to read it. Because I like reading. So. So, hopefully, so hopefully it's one of his hopeful Beautiful one. writings. Magi. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, uh, let me see, 426. <laughs> 160. 160. Okay. T.S. Eliot, Journey the Magi. A cold coming we hand of it. This is the worst time of the year for the journey. And such a long journey. The ways deep, the weather sharp, the weary dead of winter, and the camels broad, saw footed, <coughs> refractory, lying down the melting snow. There were times we wetted the southern palaces on slope, the terraces, and the silken girls bringing suburb. Then the camel men cursing, grumbling, and running away. And wanting the liquor women, and the nine fires going out to the land of his shoulders, and the cities hostile, and the towns unfriendly, and the villages dirty, and charging high prices. A whole time we had of it. In the end we preferred to travel all night, sleeping in snatches, with the voices <clears throat> saying in our ears, saying that this was all folly. Then at dawn we came down on temperate weather, wet below the slow line, smelling of vegetation, with a running stream with the water mill beating the darkness, and three trees on the low sky, and all white horse galloping away in the middle. Then we came to a tavern with wine lips over the lintel, six hands at the open door. Dicing for pieces of sorrow, and feet kicking to empty wineskins. But there was no information, so we continued and arrived in the evening, not a moment too soon, finding the place he was, you may say, satisfactory. All this was a long time ago, I remember, that I would do it again, but sat down, this sat down, this. We led all oh, that we for birth or death. There was a birth, certainly. We had evidence that no doubt that I seen birth or death, but 
and the salt they were different. This earth was hard and bitter agony for us, like a death, our death. We return to our places, to the kingdoms, but no longer an ease here in the old dispensation. With the alien people clutching their gods, I should be glad of another death. Wow, that is a beautiful one. That is a beautiful one. Onami, can you read it for us? Read How do you pronounce it? Magi? Magi? Mind guy. Ask the ask the uh, ask the uh, Magi. 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 Okay. Journey to Magi. A cold coming we had of it, just the worst time of the year, for a journey, and such a long journey. The ways deep and the weather sharp, the very dead of winter. And the cam camels, uh, gold is that that? Yeah. Sore footed. Gold. Sorry, <laughs> making the noises. <laughs> Am I? Yeah. Like you know, ca you know the story. Can meow. <laughs> <laughs> That's Chinese called mao. Yeah. That's how they learn. So. Okay. <laughs> and the camels gold, sore footed, through factory, yeah. lying down in the melting snow. There were times we regretted the summer palaces on the slopes, the terraces, the terraces, the terraces, mm, terraces, and the silken girls brought in, uh, bringing sherbet. Sherbet. I don't know that. Sherbet. Yes. What is that? No idea. A flower is sweet. Effervescent panda. Mm -hmm. Is that like the ice cream? Sherbet. Yeah. Wait, exactly like ice cream. Sherbet. You're right. Sherbet. Oh, it's sh sorbet, I think. Yeah, sorbet. Okay. Something, something good for a hot and dry weather, you know. Yes. Yeah. So. Then the camel men cursing and grumbling and running away and wanting their liquor and women mm -hmm. and the night's fires going out and the lack of shelters and the cities hostile and the towns unfriendly and the vill vill villages dirty and charging high prices. Do you want to read the poem's line? The count is really loud. Read of the understanding expression. So, so read like that. You know, or recite it. A hard time we had of it. Mm -hmm. At the end, we preferred to travel all night, sleeping in snatches, with the voices singing in our ears, saying, that is, was all folly. That this was all fun, sorry. Then at dawn, we came down to a temperature valley. Temperate. Temperate valley. Temperate Wet, um, is mild. Right. Mm -hmm. Wet below the snow line, smelling of vegetation, with a running stream of water mill beating the darkness, and the three trees on the low sky. I think I'm ready to sleep with you lady. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 And an old white horse galloped away in the meadow. Yeah. Then we came to a tavern with fine leaves over the lintel. The lintel, 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 lintel. Six hands at an open door, dicing for pieces of silver, and feet kicking the empty wineskins. But there was no information, so we continued and arrived at evening, not a moment too soon, finding the place. It. It was, as you may, satisfactory. All this time, a long t all of this was a long time ago, I remember, and I would do it again, but set down, this set down. This, where we laid all the way for birth or death. There was a birth, certainly, we had ep evidence and no doubt, and I had seen birth to and death but had thought they were different. This birth was hard and bitter, agony for us, like death, our death. We return to our places, these kingdoms, but no longer at ease here. In the old despot, 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 with an alien people clutching their gods, I should be glad of another death. Why? Why he should be glad of another death? 
why? Because he want to die, right? Pass on to uh, another life. Yes, so. Because living in the middle of uh, <coughs> pagans, worshiping the other gods, he considered now as a believer, therefore he calls his own people as an alien. My, my, my guy was actually, you know, supposed to be king, right? To bring Franklin's murder and go to the king of kings. So it's interesting uh, a mindset, you know, in the end of the journey, consider what death and life means, consider their life in the world, their meaning of the days means. So there's, a, there's a, almost like a weakening into the true meaning of the life. Well, um, Noah, you have some comments, go ahead. We're going to, this poem is very difficult, we're going to have the last more and more in, in understanding to share. Okay, so, yeah. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I don't think I have too much more to share. What? Yeah. It's <laughs> 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 a beautiful poem, man. Yeah, I think it's interesting, but I don't, I don't have anything to. That's all you got to say. Interesting. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful poem. It's like yeah. a story. You know? I see a movie. Yeah. You know? I see the different character running around. Yeah, you can respond to that like an old one also. Yeah, the imagine you the magi, magi. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Not much. Go ahead. Um, yeah, what? Well, I'm a big fan of uh, Elliot's work. You you are? Yes. Okay. The he with the whist uh, the whist land or something. The whist what? The yeah. whist the whist what? He's written a lot. So I think the most the famous was a whist or something. The whist land. Yeah, I don't remember. Whist four Whistler. quartets is the four quartets is a really four quartets. Yeah. So can, he wrote cats. Like, is that cats? It's, mm -hmm. it's, well, it's, the yeah. The poem that he wrote became cat. The idea for cats. Is that right? Music. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. A poem yeah, that he yeah, wrote yeah. about cats. Yeah. Yeah. Music uh, for cats. <clears throat> Memory. <laughs> you never heard of Memory the song? Oh, it's a Broadway. The best music musicals. So. Broadway. Oh, yeah. that's so mm. And it was just a movie not too long ago. Yeah, it's beautiful. You I'd like to see it as a place. Yeah, you, you, you need to sing it. That's a beautiful song to sing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The 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 one lady played the can character so vividly. She's one of the best singers, in musicals. Mm -hmm. Ellen oh, Page. Isn't that weird, like cat movie that came out where mm -hmm. everyone? Yeah, yeah. Ellen Page. It's like yeah. Oh, that Taylor one. Swift yeah. That one they awarded yeah. to yeah. one of the worst movies. Yeah. yeah. I wanna, I'd want to see it as a play, not the movie. Yeah. yeah. The, yeah. the, the yeah. lyric yeah. is so weird. So weird. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah Where well, wrote that? Oh, I think it's <laughs> Alan. Uh, and Rumber. I don't yeah, know. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I learned this stuff recent years. Jump began to spring me off all kinds of music. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but originally uh -huh. from T.S. Lewis. Uh, I think it's a. This is profound. This is T.S. Eliot. Yeah. Not yeah, I said Lewis. Lewis. Yeah, 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 I messed up there. Didn't yeah. I? Okay. T.S. Eliot. <laughs> I think this is deeply profound because yeah. kind of sharing what you had shared. I mean, the Magi, right? We, we talk about them being wise men, but they would have been kings. Yes. And so the fact that they're coming, you see two, two kingdoms at play. Yes. Here. And you see, uh, I think, at the first part where what's compelling to me is as they're journeying closer to the birth of Christ, yeah. they're seeing the... Um, the world in a different light to the point where it's become so odious to them that they only travel by night. I'm so happy to read Yitz's poem yeah. compared to his poem. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, it's, it's like good... two different worlds, almost. Yes. It's two different person, right? Yeah. Which life you like? Mine. The only two life. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you like your life, okay. I can't blame you for that. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what you think. Let's see, you definitely don't want to pants life, maybe. So. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think at the end, he says, at the end we prefer to travel all night, sleeping in snatches, with the voices singing in our ears, saying, singing, yeah, ears. Well. singing this was all folly. And so oh. there's a voice now that is, oh. that is discouraging this way of the, yeah. the world but I think what's most Re profound remind the, the creature uh, of you know in the movie called Lord of the Rings there was a creature with a uh, with young man 
on the on the journey to the golem. Yeah, golem. Mm -hmm. You know, he's very precious that guy. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 So, so the the wise men, the magi now, are are painting the picture that yeah, certainly there was a birth, but that wasn't the point of it. Yeah, there was a death, and it was his death. And Born really, to die, in right? A sense, in a yeah. Sense. Well, and I think the death too. What he's talking about the bigger, bitter, hard and bitter agony for us, like death, our death, death our death. We return to to our places, these kingdoms, but no longer at ease That's, there. Uh, and so it's a death. Concept of tomb and uh, yeah. redemption. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And so there's a death to the world. Mm. There's a death of a former way of things. Mm. They talk about it here the old dispensation. Mm -hmm. uh, and so yeah, like you had said, they're eager for death, which could imply a, 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 a death in the, in the natural, certainly. But I think it's. A, a renewal or a rebirth yeah. spiritually yeah. saying yeah. I long to die yeah. from this need for all of these fleshly delights now now he consider a king consider himself yeah. in his own kingdom yeah. his own kingdom as a eating yeah? you know, he consider his own people as a eating so that's a terrible transition mm -hmm. in a certain way yeah but it's a most revolutionary wonderful transition mm -hmm. in a sense found the true meaning this is this is this is poem is you can call it a pilgrim's poem, right? Mm -hmm. Pilgrim poem. Now that's a good place to end. Esther, why don't you pray for us? Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this time that we get to come together and read through these poems. Mm -hmm. I pray that we would take out the right meaning from them. Mm -hmm. And I thank you for Justin and Emmanuel teaching us. Mm -hmm. Susan so Noah. Noah. And Noah as well. Yes. I pray that you would continue to speak through them and reveal yourself to them. Mm -hmm. I pray that we would follow your ways mm -hmm. and put our trust in you. Mm -hmm. I thank you for all these people here, mm -hmm. that you would continue to bless each one. Mm -hmm. And I pray these things in your name. Mm. Amen. Mm. Um, uh, Benji, you, you pray for us. <laughs> yes, Father, I do thank you for the gift of being back in my hometown, Lord. I thank you for um, this time, Father, that we get to come together and learn, Father. I pray that you would just study our hearts during classes and just mm. help us to be good students. To our leaders, Lord Father, and I pray that you just bless them and help them to know what to say, and bless bless our understanding and help us to really take that in and help us to figure out how to apply it to our own lives, Lord. That we would just grasp that deeper knowledge and just um, mm -hmm. Father, I just thank you for each life here, and I thank you for. The situations that we are each in, Father, and I thank you, Lord, for mine. And I thank you, Lord, for just never leaving my side, Father. Mm -hmm. That every second that I've needed you, you've always been there. Bless the Lord. So, Lord, I just thank you for this time and pray that you bless this day, Father, and help us to go away in peace and to just remember what we're studying and working for, Father. Mm -hmm. Help us to have the right mindset. Like that. In your name. Amen. 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 Oh, perfect timing. Two o'clock exact.